Every time she tried to escape, her captor was right there. He scolded, commanding peace and stopping her in her tracks. But today something felt different. She had to woken up to find the door to her room unlocked, which was odd considering how strict her kidnapper had been about keeping her confined. Wine took a deep breath, glancing around the room. Maybe this is my chance. She thought. She slowly made her way to the door. Her heart pounded in her chest as she kept out into the hallway. Every time, everything was eerily quiet, and for a moment, Wine felt like she might actually make it out this time. But just as she reached the end of the hallway, a familiar voice sent chills down her spine. Going somewhere. Wan shows her body stiffing as she turned to see him standing there, the young the masked man who had kidnapped her. Only this time he was not wearing his mask. His face was fully visible, and the way she saw left her breathless. Kim the young. She recognized him immediately. Who would not? He was the infamous mafia leader known for his ruthless tactics. And the cool demeanor. His face was a dangerous combination of sharp jawlines, full lips, and intense eyes that seemed to persuade to her. Wine's mouth went dry as she stared at him. Her mind struggling to process the fact that the man standing before her, the man who had kidnapped her, was none other than Kim Tae Hyung, the most feared mafia boss in the city. You, you are Kim Tehyung. She stumbled, taking a step back. Tehyung's lips curled into a small smirk, as if he was amused by her reaction. Took you long enough to figure it out? He said, his voice smooth and deep. Wine's heart raced, and she suddenly felt very, very small under his intense gaze. Why me? She demanded, her voice shaking slightly. Why did you kidnap me? Ting walked closer, his footsteps slow and deliberate, until he was standing right in front of her. He reached out and gently tucked a loose strand of hair behind her ear, his finger grasping her skin in a way that sent shivers down her spine. Why you? He repeated, his voice low and dangerous. Let's just say I have had my eye on you for a while. Wine blinked in confusion, taking a step back, but taking a step forward, closing the distance between them. What are you talking about? She asked her voice trembling. Ting sighed, his eyes tightening as he looked at her. You don't remember, do you? Remember what? Wine was starting to feel more confused and scared at this point. She had never seen this man before, at least not up close. Ting chuckled softly, shaking his head as if he could not believe her ignorance. It was three years ago, he began his face softening just a little. I saw you walking in a park, and for the first time in a long time, I felt something. Wine found her heart beating faster as she listened. Sami, I was passing by in my car. Ting continued, his eyes looked on hers. You were sitting on a bench reading a book, and I could not take my eyes off you. Wine's eyebrows shot up. Wait, you kidnapped me because you saw me in a park three years ago? Thanks, Mark. Again, clearly amused by her reaction, it's not as simple as that. He said, I have been looking for you ever since. Wine stared at him, her mind spinning. Was this guy for real? Had he seriously been obsessed with her for three years just because of some random encounter in a park? You are insane, she said, shaking her head in disbelief. You can't just kidnap someone because you you have a crush on them or something. Ting's eyes starken and he took a step closer. His voice lowering to a dangerous whisper. It's more than just a crush, sweetheart. Vine's breath caught in her throat. As she looked up at him, there was something in his eyes, a burning intensity, that the boy felt in and intrigued her. Three years, Ting murmured, his finger brushing lightly against her cheek. I have waited three years for this moment. 
by and swallowed her. Her mind racing. This was insane. She was kidnapped by a mafia boss who had been obsessed with her for years. And now he was standing there looking at her like she was the most precious thing in the world. What? What do you want from me? She asked her voice barely a whisper. The cliffs curled into a smirk. I want you to stay by my side. Vinesa skipped the beast. Stay by your side? Are you out of your mind? You kidnapped me. How do you expect me to do? Before she could finish her sentence, the thing grabbed her wrist and pulled her toward him. His body pressed against her vines but hissed as she felt the heat radiating from him. Her heart pounded in her chest. Because the thing whispered his lips inches from her, you don't have a choice. Vines was written as she stared up at him, her pulse rising. You are crazy, she whispered, her voice trembling. The thing smirked deep and maybe he says softly, but you will stay, you will see. Vine could not believe what was happening. She had been kidnapped by one of the most dangerous men in the city and now he was telling her that he had been in love with her for three years. None of this made any sense. But what made even less sense was the fact that her heart was racing not just out of fear but out of something else, something she did not want to admit it. Look, I don't care what your reasons are, Vine said her, wishing it slightly. I'm no saying I'm no staying here with you. You need help, professional help. Think chuckled, he's eyes gleaming with amusement. You think I am crazy, don't you? Vine crossed her arms, trying to muster up some courage. Yeah, I do. What kind of person kidnaps someone because they had a crush on them three years ago? That's not normal, you know? Think step closer again, his eyes looking onto hers. Maybe I'm not normal, he says softly, but you are not exactly ordinary either. Why scoff? What does that even mean? Think reached out gently, tilting her chin up so that she was forced to meet his case. It means, he says slowly, that you have been in my head for so long, I can't let you go now. Vines have fluttered and she hated herself for it. There was something about the way he looked at her, the way his this way softened when he spoke to her that made her feel things she should not be feeling. You are insane, she whispered, but her voice looked the conviction she was at eyeing it. A thing smiled a soft, almost affectionate smile, and for a moment Vines had something in his eyes, something that was not cold or cruel, but almost vulnerable. I might be, he murmured, his fingers brushing against her cheek again. But that does not change the fact that you are mine now. Vance breath hissed her body tingling at his touch. I'm not, I'm not yours, she said so she said weakly. Ting leaned in closer, his lips dangerously close to hers. We'll see about that. Vans are raised as she stared up at him, her mind spinning with confusion and fear and uh, something else, something she was not ready to admit yet. To be continued.